Hey, welcome to another episode of GeekOutdoors.com. So this week, Google Duplex AI is released and Uber joins the Linux Foundation. Now, if you're not familiar with Google Duplex is, it is basically the next evolution of Google Assistant, specifically when it comes to voice AI. So how it works right now is you would tell Google Assistant that you would need to schedule a restaurant reservation for a specific night at a certain time. So from there, Google Duplex makes the call to the restaurant and makes the reservation. Now, if you actually go to YouTube and look up Google Duplex, this is where things just take it to another level because as you see the conversation and hear how the AI is talking to an actual human being, it is absolutely mind blowing. And I really feel that if Google gets this right, they will be the leaders of voice AI. Um, I really feel that they are the leaders in AI right now anyway, and so it's pretty uncanny how human-like it sounds. You could choose from a variety of different voices and genders, and maybe later on you'll be able to choose different languages as well. Now, this particular release of Duplex AI is a very limited release. It's only for Google Pixel owners, and it's currently only available in Atlanta, New York City, Phoenix, and San Francisco. And so the implications of this is huge. Obviously, if it is as successful as Google wants it to be, they will be the leaders. Among all the other large technology companies who are heavily invested in AI, including Apple, Facebook, Microsoft, and Amazon, who all have AI services that most of us use every single day now. And what separates the current AI from this future AI is the complexity in which the AI can make decisions and also how human-like it is. And I think that's something that can be really exciting but also super creepy and super scary the exciting part is obviously with ai that we have today a lot of the things that used to take us a lot of time ai takes care of a lot of that just imagine you know how inefficient your life would be without your smartphone and then without all the various services that are making a lot of decisions and recommendations for you i don't think a lot of people realize how much artificial intelligence that they're using every single day uh, and it's not just something that's really apparent like Google Assistant, Siri or Cortana. There's a lot of services that we use that use very complex AI underneath it to actually provide us what we need and with this you're going to be able to save even more time you know just think about here with the restaurant reservations later on it could be used to do many other complex things you know it could be used for your doctor appointments uh, it could be used to you know, teach people. Um, it could be used for so many different areas. And obviously the negative side of it is the fact that if it sounds as human-like and it's as complex as it is and it can be very conversational, you will no longer be able to tell whether or not this is a real person or not. And you could see where it could go bad in the sense that it, if it were able to take your voice and then use AI to simulate that, yeah, it could do a lot of bad things. And I, w I would not put that out of the realm of possibility, especially since we use our phones all the time. So you could see a scenario where maybe something's recording your voice, it'll feed into an AI, and now a technology like Google Duplex AI could now become you. But overall, this is something that, you know, we have no choice in. This is where everything's going. Um, and this is where, you know, all these companies are investing in. And if you think about phone calls, you know, which is what really this is focused on right now, having conversations, even though that might sound really, really creepy, just think about you calling to customer service nowadays. Most people do not talk to a human being anymore. They'll talk to a machine, a very basic AI that will give you decisions on to what to choose and then it will direct you to the right place or even take actions for you. You know, this is something that I think a lot of us are used to, especially with calling customer service and we get a machine to do it for us. So it's basically going to be the same thing, but it's going to be way more complex and it's going to sound a lot more human-like. So it will be very interesting to see how this rollout works. And as it expands uh, to many other areas, let's see how people respond to this. I think initially, as with any new piece of technology, it's going to be a very bumpy road. But I really feel in the next few years, <laughs> this is going to be the norm. So the second bit of technology news concerns Uber joining the Linux Foundation. So on the recent Uber Open Summit in uh, San Francisco, we actually had Jim Zemlin, the executive director of Linux Foundation, 
and the chief scientist of Uber AI, it's funny enough, <laughs> and uh, they had this keynote here and one of the big announcements was that Uber is now joining as a gold member right here. And so uh, I have talked about this before, if you actually go to the Linux Foundation and then you look at all the companies who are actually members of the Linux Foundation, they're not small companies uh, who have a lot of vested interests in Linux because obviously it makes them money. But at the same time, this helps the open source community. You know, um, I mean, for a lot of people, I think who are in open source, who are heavily into FOSS, I think most people don't like big companies. But the fact of the matter is, without these big companies, open source would not be where it is today. And I definitely do not think Linux would be where it is today because you actually need companies to actually invest and put money into this so then they could provide the services for the end users. So these are all huge companies all around the world. And you could easily see where Uber AI fits into this or Uber into Linux Foundation because there's been an initiative for the open source driving AI and that is something that uh, Uber definitely wants to be a part of specifically when there's so many other companies who are investing in self-driving cars and especially the AI comes with it and a lot of it will run on some Linux based kernel. So as you can see here Toyota is also a partner as well and this is all in preparation for self-driving cars. So you can see here we have the automotive artificial intelligence group and over here we also have something called Apollo which is an open source for automotive AI and so this is going to be a huge huge thing and it's definitely not going to slow down and so Uber becoming a part of this is definitely a step in the right direction for the company and once again all of this will lead to more resources for open source and Linux in general among many other things and so I think this would be a good thing overall um, because this is definitely uh, not going to slow down anytime soon and we're going to get more and more larger companies invested into this and so I wouldn't be surprised if you see more automotive companies join this as well as we get more and more development in the whole automotive AI space and so that is it for this week's news if you had any thoughts on Google's duplex AI or Uber joining the Linux Foundation be sure to leave that in the comments area below and as always if you did get value out of these videos share like and subscribe Hey geeks, if you are a creative geek like me and you wanted to learn how to create content on YouTube and other places on the internet, then check out my Go Content Creators Group where you'll get access to 30 videos plus additional content for all the creative geeks out there. And the best part of it is, all of this is free. Simply head over to the link below, check out my page, and sign up for my Go Content Creators Group. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the other side. Thanks for checking out this episode. And as always, if you like these videos, be sure to click on the subscribe button. And for full written content, audio content, and additional geek stuff, head over to geekoutdoors.com. And I'll see you outdoors on the very next episode.